that funny. It really is not that funny. In amongst the ducks and the swans, I don't see any geese. It's a bonus. Right outside a pub called, ironically, the Riverside Pub. I'm actually outside the back door of Letchlade Angling Centre, and they tell me some really good fish in Lee Pollard. Uh, said, you know, you can come here and you can normally get some quite good perch, but on worm. Now, a lot of it you learn is about drop shotting, you know, with small lures. Undoubtedly that works here, and undoubtedly larger shad will catch. But a lot of guys don't have that, have regular fishing tackle. If you've got regular fishing tackle, you can either ledger or float fish for perch on the bottom. And I'm doing both. I'm over there, float fishing, just a straight uh, waggler, just a slightly over depth, slightly over what they call dead depth, because there's not much current here. Um, I've fired out red maggots, I haven't put a lot of ground bait in for all the birds. People come into the pub, they feed the birds on bread. Yes, they think I'm going to feed them with bread as well. Anyway, I've got some red maggots out there. I've got some here, some dendrobina worms as well. I'm going to be using those primarily because I might become a bigger roach, half pound, pound maybe. And I'm ledgering straight out as well, so I'm covering both angles here. It's going to be a bit noisy, I'm by the bridge. Hey ho, let's crack on. We'll look at the rigs in a second. Just need to have five minutes looking at that float. Okay, here's my evaluation, people. We've got a big bay area here, because let's say they can obviously rent boats out as well, so you can get a boat and row out on the river and do some maybe some lure fishing there. Uh, but what you got is from the pub on the opposite corner, you're here by the racket and the rabble, that people feed the ducks here. Now they tend to feed them right in front of these chairs. And I'm wondering if all those particles left over that the ducks miss, the fish must home in on that. In fact, I'm pretty sure they would do. So what I'm doing is float fishing on the corner of where I think any fish, I've been watching where people feed. They feed up here on the right hand side and down there on the left hand side with all the ducks. The ducks know the people, as soon as somebody walks up here, the ducks all swim straight across there. I reckon the fish follow them as well. So by fishing with my float in between the two, I think any perch patrolling would also patrol between those two, almost following the ducks. That's my theory. We'll find out if it works and hopefully get to show you a few perch. And here's the rod and reel setup for the ledger. It's an Avon rod. It's got my super lightweight notebook sized bob in there to a regular cheapo buzzer. And I've got the rod top pointing straight out into the swim. Easy peasy. And here's the luxury setup of the chair. Totally awesome luxury repair chair with an old log for a backrest. And the front rest is yes, it's a bait can stood in its side. Well, I forgot all my rod rest and I can't put them in concrete anyway, but wait for this. I use a wicker armchair to rest my landing net on, which doubles with the leg of which holds my keep net. Now, around bridge buttresses and archways of any bridge really where the current gets constricted is a great place to look for perch especially when there's a bit of flood water coming through there another good place if you are drop shot in is alongside these old barges but in fact if you cast from the other bank and cast a swim feeder with maggots or worms you can also pick up perch there the guys we've got first perch on here on worm tipped with double red maggot not big fish Nice Thames perch. Bring it up and show it here. There we go. That's the sort of average perch you're going to catch in the Thames. Nothing wrong with that at all. You can see his mouth. There's the maggots. So I've got dendrobina worms, just double maggots on there, red maggots tipped. And I'll bounce probably between the two, between whole worm, which I feel might get slightly bigger perch, and um, double maggots which I feel will get these average size perch. So it's soldier on and obviously maybe my theory of where those ducks are going and the perch are following and the small fish might be true. Okay if you're ledgering on the bottom and you've got a lot of leaves and rubbish there especially in the autumn time you might just want to pop the worm up. Now I'm using from a ledger rod here straight running ledger stopped by a shop just there got a link here a slightly lighter line it's about four and a half pound line but then I've got, you can see that, a BB shot there, and that is about one, two, three, maybe four inches from here. I've got my hook, maybe size 10. What I want to do is I want to try and 
rather than have the worms sink down in amongst the leaves and the debris on the bottom, I want to try and have that as the anchor weight and a little bit of rise in it with a sort of, if you like, a floater, just to try and lift. I don't know why he thinks it's so funny. It really isn't funny. Smith, get to the back of the class. I'm going to put the worm on here. In this case, a dendrobina like this. Now, you could do this two ways. I feel the best way is to put plastic sweet corn, which is buoyant, on first. It's also a little bit of bright target, especially in the winter. So I'm going to thread that plastic sweet corn right round. I don't like putting the worm on first and then the sweet corn, because it might mask the point. This way, it should hold, pop that worm, see, just over the eye, everything's over the eye of the hook, go through the middle, go through there, apologies for the traffic, was right by a bridge. Now you think that would lay on the bottom, but that should, if it's not the ducks, it's the traffic. Give me a second, bear with me out there, you YouTubers. I'm gonna cast this out, the ledger weight, We'll take it down to the bottom, then I have the running ledger here, but then I'm anchored with a shot here, and it should just push it up against the bend of the hook, right up like this. So that's how it's gonna that's how it's gonna look to the perch. You can fish it even shorter. That a couple of inches is quite good, especially in the winter. It just brings it in their target range. Don't forget this piece of sweet corn acts like a little magnet to them, water slightly coloured, they might just see it, and you're putting it really in their zone. You can also do it another way. Pardon me one moment guys, I've got um, one of these for you. <laughs> Catch while you feel me, can't be bad can it? That's on the float there, so the float's still working away. And still on the cocktail bait of the worm tipped with double red maggots, or in that case I think it was a sort of gold bronze maggot. Personally I like white, but for some reason perch do like red. Let's get this out and I'll show you how else to rig up. Right, and a lot of commercial waters, let's say carp waters, more and more big perch are being caught. And only recently, this year, I was out with Mike, we had a screaming carp run on carp gear, struck into this fish, it turned into a really nice perch of about two pounds. And do you know what it took? Worms, no, lobworms, no, artificial sheds, no. It took a pop-up, right? So on commercial waters, let me just get my scissors here. On commercial waters, I feel, other than using a piece of sweet corn to pop up with, why don't you use some of these pop up? I'll purposely turn it around because we don't get free ones off them. I'll show you what they look like. These are carp pop ups like this. They have a lovely smell actually. Very, very buoyant and they lift the bait off the bottom. Obviously, you wouldn't use a whole one as you would do for carp. But I'm just thinking the perch. If that perch took a whole pop up, there's nothing else on there, snowman rig. If I use a nice white target one like this, cut it in half. As you can see, you can even cut it small if you want. Thread that around the hook, through the hook, just like, like this, just through, nick it through the edge. They're really, really tough, these things. They last for ages. Some people will say, throw them away once you've used them, but I don't, I'll dry them out really tight. I could dry them out with a piece of tissue paper. Really tight. So I've got it slid up like that. Get myself a nice worm there. This one I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch showing. Thread the worm all the way up and then leave another quarter of an inch at the opposite end. So it's just, well, you can hopefully on the lens actually see that wiggling and moving. And then I slide this up and just barely push the hook into it. Make sure that hook point's clear so it pops up and will sit like that underwater. That puts it in their target zone. They might just see this white. And if they're used to eating these boilies, like I think they might be, boilies and pop-ups, hey-ho, why not capitalise that on commercial waters, commercial carp waters, where there are indeed some very big perch. If you do use those pop-ups for perch on commercial waters, just be aware that when they're just this much off the bottom, two or three inches, and with something that the carp anglers use regularly, there's every chance you could slam into, yeah, a big carp as well. 
So perch, defo, possibly a bit of a spool emptying carp as well. Just be aware. Okay, here's my setup for the float fishing. I'm using, as I said, a straight waggler float there, locked either side by BB Shop, but right down at the bottom end, the business end, about 10 inches of the hook. I've got a number eight shot there just to hold it in position because the river is very, very slow. In fact, it's barely moving at the moment. It's not the greatest conditions, but I've got to make do. I can't make water. I can, but I'll get arrested. Anyway, the number eight shot just rests on there and stops it dragging and if it does drag it just slows the bait go down going across the bottom my hook there i put on there's a dendrobina worm now dendrobina worms you can buy if you want to buy them the cheapest way you can you can buy them in these sort of sacks i want to call it hessian but it's like a plastic now and they're in this brown material dark brown sort of peaty material i don't know what it is and there's the worms dendrobinas they're a nice size very very good for tench as well but they keep in this material in this medium for Sometimes weeks if you keep them cool, cool dark place, maybe sprinkle a little bit of moisture in there. And when you hook the worm, that's the cheapest way to buy them, obviously. If you don't go perch fishing a lot, then you just buy a little tub from the tackle shop or dig your own. The worms have what we call a saddle there. I don't know if you can see that mark. Now for some reason, maybe it's a bit tougher, I put my first hook point through the saddle, pop it over the eye, go through again, but not by the tail. I leave it so it's a bit wiggling like that. Then, using some of these double reds, they're not double reds, Graham, they're just single maggots. I'm going to put on a double red maggot, but just tip them, hooking the point and nicking it through the fat end first. Just for beginners, that's the fat end, that's the numb feeding end. And I've done one each end, there, just like that. And then that is really an ideal perch bait. They've got these double reds there, which for some reason seem to work very well in the winter. And you've got the worm, or as the Americans, I think, call them a night crawler. Well, night crawlers over here, I think they get uh, arrested. But there you go. That is ideal for float fishing. Let's get it out there and see how we get on. That's a bit better fish. That's a monster. But they are getting a bit larger. And again, it appears those worms and double web maggots just tipped on the edge. Lovely little chap, this fin. Look at that. Beautiful condition. And that appears to be doing the damage. That's about eight or ten perch now. One quite nice and about three times as big as this. But I didn't have the camera all fired up, but there you go. Nice little perch, pop it in and see if I can't pick a few more for you. Once you've cast out a float, even though there's not much flow, always make sure you just sink the line a bit by putting your rod top under the water and a turn or two of the reel handle just sinks that line and stops you getting what's called wind drift. That way the float should remain in exactly the same position you cast it, obviously depending on how much current's going through the river. I've been catching quite regularly, not going mad, but steady, what you call steady through the day. Getting perch about this size. It seems the float's definitely um, getting better bites than I am on the ledger. And the ones on the ledger seem to be a little bit bigger, so I wonder if it is that pop-up. It's just holding the bait a little bit more off the bottom and in the zone of the slightly bigger fish. I mean, they're not big, but, but the float so, certainly Missed him again on the, on the pop up. I can't tell you where I'm missing on that. I just have to concentrate. Get this guy back. Anyway, loads of tips for you. I'm going to give it a little while longer. It's starting to spit with rain, so I want to show you the few I have got in the keep net. But there are some tips there for you on perch. Fish it with lobworm, float and or ledger. 
and who knows, I might even get one more before I pack up. Another little tip, if you're using a 13 foot match rod, just be aware with a waggler you need to lay the rod back quite a bit to get a good throw at it. And obviously you've got a long drop to your hook base and so make sure you don't tangle up in the trees. Give yourself plenty of room for casting. It's getting near the last cast. I've just hit a slightly better fish. I want to say it's a roach, but it's not a thing. It is. No, it's a really nice roach. <laughs> and you tell me they're in here. Unusual almost to get more worth. What is it with us and totally awesome noises with strimmers, chainsaws? This is a really nice roach, guys. What a fish to finish from on the English River Thames. OMG. Don't tell me that's not a nice fish. That is a beauty. Let me get you unhooked now. I actually thought it might have been a skimmer. Again, come on, float. I don't want to drop him because I'm over concrete. There we go. Really nice roach there. Pleased with that fish. What a way to end a perch fishing. I'll say that again. But what a way to end a perch fishing session with a nice roach like that. Had a great little trip. Not been easy, but just shows you the method works. And hey ho, on the float, that worm and maggot cocktail works not just for perch, but for roach as well. I can't stop there. It's our time of the evening. Oh no, he's got to be weeding or something. That's annoying. Oh, he's come off. Well, anyway, this was just supposed to be an instructional what I got lucky. I got a few fish, got them in the keep net. I think I'll get them out and show you and then pack up. Here we go. Not too shabby a catch. Really nice big roach there. Decent sized perch, good mixed catch, I think you'd agree, that's not bad, and that roach, got to be the icing on the cake, but look, there is a really nice perch as well, there we go, look at the size of that perch, that's a good sized perch, British fishing, look at this, a nice perch and a roach together. Supreme fish, contrast of colours, and that's why we should be looking after our river fishing. Let's get these guys back, hope you've got some tips there. I've enjoyed catching them. Get them straight back in the water, and a great day's fishing was had by me. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show.